Well, hello, I'm Professor Kitch, and today we're going to do this really simple tabletop direct shear test to give you a good feel for how soils behave in shear. I'm going to just do a quick review of the direct shear test. I know you probably all read the book, but uh, this is our direct shear apparatus. Uh, what we have, uh, looking down from on top, I've got a ring like this. So this is a top view, and I've got soil inside the ring there. So that's what it looks like from the top. Uh, this is an elevation view. So it's an elevation view, so I'm looking at it sideways. And here's my ring, but my ring's actually split in two. There's a top part to it and a bottom part to it. So I'm kind of looking at a cross section through it here. And then my soil, today we're using green soil. My green soil is all inside there. And then I'm gonna take my ring uh, of soil, I'm going to put a loading cap on the top of it. It's just a just a metal thing that I can use to make sure I have a nice even load on it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some normal force here on the top. I'm going to push down with a normal force and then I'm going to pull in this direction with some shear force. So what's going to happen is this top part of the ring is going to slide this direction. This part's fixed to the table and the soil is going to fail right along a line here. And so I'm going to put a certain normal force on here. I'm going to measure the shear force that's required for this to move or shear or fail along this line. And then I can develop a table of the normal force and the shear force. And I'm going to do this for Fn is equal to Fn1 and I'll get an FS is equal to FS1. So I'll have a value here for the first one. So this will be FN1 and FS1. And then I'll change this. I'll increase it I'll leave, uh, to a, a number that's FN2. And then I'll pull here again. So I have FN2 here now. And I'll get a new force that's required for it to shear along here. That'll be FN2. And Sorry, that's F. S2, and so here's FS2, and I'll just keep doing that for a few of these. So I'll have FN3, FS3, etc. And then what I can do is I can do a plot of the shear force required to fail as a function of the normal force that was applied, and I'll have these points on here, and then I can do like a best fit line through them. And then the angle of that with the horizontal is going to be my friction angle, and the intercept down here is going to be my cohesion. So we're going to do a tabletop version of that. So uh, let's go do that now. So here's my super simple tabletop demonstration of a direct shear test. So this is how I'm going to do this. I've got a brass ring here that's attached to this pipe cleaner, and that's attached to this spring scale and that's going to measure the horizontal force applied to the specimen. It's resting on this piece of sandpaper and I've got a bunch of sand spilled on it so I get a good sand to sand contact on the shear surface. So I'm going to place my ring here on the sand and I'll pour a little bit of sand in there, fill it up some, maybe about halfway or so, and then I'm going to put this piece of cardboard on top so I have a good surface to rest it on. And then I can place weights on the top to be my normal force pressing down, and then I, what I'm going to do is pull this piece of sandpaper to create a direct shear plane right across the bottom of the specimen. So I'm just going to pull the piece of sandpaper, it's going to slide on there, and then I'll measure the shear force here. So I'm putting a normal force on here, I know what that is. It's failing on a horizontal plane here that's sand to sand, that's why I'm using the piece of sandpaper, and I'll measure the shear force there. And knowing the normal force and the shear force, I can calculate the friction angle. So what I'm going to do now is reset the camera up so we can look down on the top of this and you guys can see the measurements. I'm going to take a bunch of different direct shear measurements. Ready? Okay, we're ready to do a little bit of simple uh, direct shear testing here. Uh, the very first test, I'm going to put some sand in here, but I'm not going to put any normal force on it. So let me just put a little bit of sand in there. Now I'm going to gently, I'm going to gently pull the sandpaper out from under there and I want you to watch the measurement on the spring scale. I'm going to try and come to like a 
equilibrium point here where, it, where it's uh, not static friction but dynamic friction. So I'm pulling along there. There's no normal press. And you notice that we're basically reading zero. Okay, so that was our first test. And we had no normal force. And notice we were reading basically zero shear force there. All right, so now let's do our second test. I'm going to put a little more, put some sand back in there. And for our second test, I'm going to set this up. Um, I'm going to put this piece of paper so I can load it. I'm going to put 500 grams, half a kilogram, as my normal force. And now let's watch the, the gauge here, the spring scale. And I'm going to pull out, when I get it smooth in there, and, and it looks like it's just a little over 200. Uh, I had 500 grams here, and we had about 200 grams there. All right? So remember that. The normal force was 500. The shear force was 200. All right, I'm going to go out here again. Put some sand back in there, make sure it's right. Put my piece of paper on the top. Okay, now I'm going to put 1,000 grams on the top of this. And I'm going to pull my paper and we're going to see what happens. I got about a thousand grams and uh, it looks like it's about right at 500. It was bouncing between the 400 and the 600. So we're going to call that a thousand grams normal force, one kilogram and 500 grams of shear force. And the very last test we're going to do, put some more sand back in there. The very last test we're going to do is with a normal force of 1,500 grams, 1 1.5 kilograms. I'm going to put that in there and watch our scale now. Let's see what we get to. Try to get a static one. And it looks like that was right about between uh, 700 and 800. It was kind of hard to see because it was bouncing around. Let's try it again, get a second reading on that one because that one was kind of difficult to see. It looked like to me it was like between 700 and 800. Some sand in there. Get my piece of paper on there. Okay, I've got 1,500 grams here. Let's try it again. Yeah, it looked to me like it was bouncing there between 600 and 800, but it was closer to 700. So. When we had zero grams on top, we were reading zero. When we had 500 grams on top, we were reading 200. When we had 1,000, we were reading about 500. And when we had 1,500, we were reading about 700. So those are the numbers we're going to plot. OK, that tabletop test was really exciting. Let's plot the data and see what we get. Now remember, we tested with normal forces of, this is in grams, 0, 500, 1,000, and 1,500. And we measured 0 shear force at 0. We measured 200 at 500. We measured 500 at 1,000. And we measured 700 at 1,500 normal force. That's as good as we could do with our little tabletop test. But let's plot those data on our plot. So here I have a plot of the shear force required to fail the soil as a function of the normal force. And the first point was at 0, 0. So we're going to plot a point right there. And then we had 500, 200. So it's 255. So that's about right there. Then we had 1,500. That's an easy one to plot. And then we had 1,500, 700. So here's 750 down a little bit from that, about right there. And now we can fit a best fit line through those. I'm just going to look right up here. And it's going to look just like this. That looks pretty much like my best fit line through there. And then the slope of that line is going to be the friction angle. And here, the cohesion is going to be zero, because there was zero force there. And I've got a really good eyes here, and I can tell that that friction angle is right about equal to 25 degrees. And you can actually put those points in your calculator and calculate a best fit line, and you'll find out that that friction angle is right at 25 degrees. So this was for a 
dry sand, okay, and we found out that it was cohesionless and had a friction angle of about 25 degrees. Let's look at some cohesive soils and see how they behave. Hey, watch this. Oh my God, what just happened? I just threw two different kinds of soil onto the whiteboard. The first was this silty soil that comes down from my big bend. And the second was this sand, this clean, dry sand. Now notice, when I threw the silty soil on the wall, it stuck. And when I threw the loose sand, nothing happened. Well, how come this is sticking? What forces are there that is allowing this to stay there? Let's draw a free body diagram. All right, so here's the wall. And here's my blob of silty, sand, silty soil. This is silt. Okay, so let's draw a free body diagram of just the silt. So I'm going to take that. Here it is. Let's draw our free body diagram. Well, what forces do I have acting here? Well, I have the weight here, and that's it. That's the only thing that's acting on this side. So what's happening on the wall here? There's no force, there's no horizontal force being applied here. I just have the weight. And so that's, you know, the mass times gravity. Well, I must be having a reaction here in this direction. I'm going to call that S. I must have a force S here. And notice that there is no force in this direction. This is equal to zero. So how can I generate, as this is a shear force, right? This, this wants to shear along there. How can I generate a shear force when there's no normal force? Well, this is one of the characteristics of cohesive soils. Cohesive soils, when the normal force is zero, have some shear strength, in this case it's S, we call that the cohesion. So cohesive soils at zero normal stress have a cohesion, C. Now, I threw my sand on there. Right? I threw my sand on here, I threw a big blob of sand on there, it just fell down. So why did it fall down? Well, because the sand was sitting there like this, it had mg here, but there was no force here at all. This S was equal to zero, and so it fell down. And that's exactly what we found out when we tested our sand on the tabletop, that the cohesion was actually zero. When there was zero normal force, there was zero shear strength. Cool. Let's go test our silt on our little shear table. Okay, here I am back at my little simple direct shear table I've made up here. I'm gonna test our silty soil here on our direct shear device here. First we're going to test it with uh, no normal force on it. I'm going to see what the uh, shear force is required to fail it. On that one, do that again a couple times. I look pretty close to 300 grams to me. It's really fast, so you're going to have to watch carefully. But it looks like it's failing at about 300 grams. So we're going to write that down. I have All right, so now we're going to test it with a 500 uh, gram normal force. And I want to get that sliding friction on here. So we want to uh, see So it looks to me at 500 grams of normal force that it's failing at right about 500 grams that that static is about it's between 400 and 500. Let me do it one more time. Yeah, see, it's, it goes up to 600, goes down to 400. So let's call it 500. So at 500 grams of normal force, I had 500 grams of shear force. So now let's let's go up to a thousand. So I'm put a thousand grams of normal force on here. See how much shear force we get. Oh, that's right at a thousand. Look at that. Okay, so at one thousand grams of normal force, 
So let's check that one out at 1,000 grams of normal force. We'll see what we get. So at 1,000 grams of normal force. Oh, it looks like it's between one kilogram and 800. Oh, that looks right at 900. So let's call that at 1,000 grams of normal force. We're getting 900 grams of shear force. And then finally, uh, we want to do a test. At 1500 grams of normal force. So I've now got 1500 grams of normal force on there. We'll see what we get here. So let me give it a little go here. So it looks like it's between, I'm going to, it looks like it's right between 1500 and 1300. So I'm going to call it 1400 grams. And that was at 1500 grams of normal force, I had 1,400 grams of shear force. So that's what I get with this, with this silty soil. So let's go back over to the graph and plot that up. Okay, let's plot our data from our silty soil, the one that's stuck to the wall. So for that soil, I'll plot them in red. At the same normal forces, FS was 300, 500, 900 and 1400. So we'll plot those points here. So at zero, let's see, there's 250, so there's 300s about right there. And 500, 500, that one's easy. 1900, there's 1900, it's probably about right there. And at 1500, 1400 is 1500s right there, 1400 is about right there. All right, and then I can draw a best fit line through those. Uh, it looks like it's uh, going to be something like, you know, I didn't do a very good job there, something like this, uh, but clearly an intercept here. Well, that intercept is going to be my C prime. It looks like it's about, we measured 400 here, uh, 300 here, but it looks like it's lower than that. It looks like it's closer to 200 if I do the intercept. And then this is my friction angle. That looks a little steeper than my other one. That looks like it's uh, 20, 25, and maybe that's about 30 degrees. I don't know, you have to measure that one. So what did we learn about that? Well, we have a cohesive soil. This is a ML, it was a low plasticity silt. And we had a finite intercept here. We had a C prime is equal to, and in this case it was, we're gonna say 200. And then we had a phi prime was equal to 30. Now, I'm fibbing to you a little about this. These are really, really simple tests. And the truth is, these really aren't effective stress parameters because I did that test really, really fast. And later we'll talk about how that's going to affect the test. But the basic principle is, is correct here. So when I have cohesionless soils, so I have a sand, uh, or, or a gravel that has no cohesive material in it, I'm going to have a material that has no cohesion and it has a positive friction angle here. In the case of cohesive soils, I'm going to get some kind of intercept here. They're going to have some strength at zero normal force. That'll be the cohesion. And then they too may increase with strength. Now these are really rough measurements. That was a really simple test. They're, they're not particularly accurate, but the basic principles are shown there. So that's cohesive soil and the sand isn't.